Hello everyone out there in Facebook and also the internet, and welcome to Progressive Discussions, but tonight it's going to be more of a New Age mysticism topic. Tonight we're going to be talking about the third eye, how to open it, and how to use it to its full potential. So, the third eye. It is definitely a wondrous creation that us human beings have in our brains. So, actually, it's not just one piece of the brain. It's actually two parts. It's the uh, the pineal gland, the pineal gland. I've heard it pronounced both ways. And when they look into the brain, it looks like two pieces of... Uh, it looks like either egg shapes or like seed-shaped objects that are in the brain and they also closely resemble the eye of Horus in ancient egyptian culture and also has a nickname for the eye of god for the eye of infinite knowledge and infinite power so the egyptians as well as ancient mesopotamians the greeks the romans um some parts of the medieval era as well as modern day societies you know about the third eye and also a lot of ancient religions like hinduism buddhism uh shintoism and uh i believe zoroastrianism had a little bit of dabbling with the third eye so it's definitely well known throughout history so now that we've gotten the history and the background established first we're going to talk about how you open the third eye well the third eye is not physically a third eye right here in the middle of the forehead. I mean, it's obvious, you know, human beings have just only two eyes. But this one is one that cannot be seen. So, the way that you open it is, you get yourself nice and comfortable. You could be laying in bed, sitting in the floor, or you can just be kicking back in your favorite chair. Just... The point is to be comfortable and relaxed. So, once you got yourself nice and comfortable, then you just kind of lean back, don't really think about a lot of different things, and if there's a thought in your head, you just let it go. It's not really important. It's not really relevant. So, you go almost into like this meditative state or just like a state of calmness, relaxation, what have you. And then you close your eyes and you focus both of your eyes up to the very center of your forehead. So the third eye may not open up on your first attempt, but whenever it does open, you will begin to feel a little tingling or like a pressure sensation, like right here to about up into here. And it will feel like there's also like a, like an actual eye moving in the middle of your forehead. It's a very weird, creepy, interesting sensation, but that's okay. Just go along with it. Now, once it opens, and you feel the pressure. Sometimes it'll give you a little bit of a headache, but that goes away after a certain amount of time. But when it also begins to first open, your five senses, they become extremely heightened, and they become extra sensitive. So sounds are much more heightened. What you see is more visually appealing or more sensitive. So it's best to do it more in a quiet, not so well lit room. I mean, if there's like a, a lamp light or something, that'll be okay. But preferably candles and low light. If there's like a bright fluorescent light, it would really be excruciatingly painful and bright. So your um, taste become way more heightened and way more sensitive to not only taste, but texture. And also, you begin to feel more stuff around you, if that makes any sense. So, okay. um, you can feel more of, like, energies and presence that are near you. So, you can definitely feel all the mixed emotions that there are out there in the world. 
So you can feel happiness, you can feel sadness, you can feel depression, anxiety, all that. That's just from what you feel. Now, when you're around other people, you can feel more of their auras and see their auras, so to speak. And you become very adept and very aware of who they are as individual human beings. So you'll be able to really see just how good or bad they are in the mind and in the heart. As well as you'll be able to tell if someone is telling the truth or if you're being lied to. And it doesn't make you 100% psychic, but it gives you greater abilities to read people, if that makes sense. Now, when it comes to using your third eye for intellectual purposes so your brain operates to the left brain and the right brain and they're both diametrically opposite but yet the two feed off of each other so your left brain thinks very logistical and logical while your right brain is the exact opposite it's more to the creative side of things so the third eye operates like that to a certain extent, but not entirely. So the third eye goes above the two sides of the brains to where when the third eye is explaining something or showing something, it's not doing it from a left brain or from a right brain perspective. It's showing it from a much more clear point of observation to where it's not looking at it purely based on logic or purely based on emotion, what have you. It's just looking at it for what it is, regardless of what it is. So it's very awakening to do it for intellectual purposes because you'll be able to really grasp concepts in their entireties. And you'll also be able to really go deeper into the meanings the deeper meanings of the meanings, the secrets behind the secrets, things like that. Now, using it for meditation, which is primarily what people, at least here in Western civilization, use it for is for meditation. So when you're in your comfortable state, you're not really thinking about what's going on in the world, like what's going on in your relationship, the good, the bad, what's going on with your job, the good and the bad, what's going on in the world, the good and the bad. It's primarily just focusing on the self or what is considered the self in whatever regard you want to look at it in. So with everything being considered, you also begin to understand things about yourself that you probably would not have understood had it not been brought to your attention by the third eye. So I could say, for example, if you have a particular quirk or a particular tick or habit, and no one's ever really been able to give you an explanation as to why that is, your third eye would be able to tell you because it understands you better than you understand yourself. Now, to some people, that is kind of off-putting, but when you think about it, it's actually a very helpful and constructive tool for not only figuring out who you are as an individual, but it can also help you understand, you know, why you are the way that you are. Like, what makes you good, what makes you bad, what makes you in between, et cetera, et cetera. Now, getting back to the senses, when they're so heightened and so sensitive, there's even a point to where even the senses begin to bleed into each other. And as uh, they, uh, if, hang on, let me reword that. They bleed into each other as well as they begin to go off of one another. Because people have this conception of, that the five senses are separate in their own regard, but yet only have a few similarities, and that's it. It's actually not true. 
when the senses began to bleed into each other, and it's hard to really differentiate one from the other, you could literally see colors that you normally would not see. You could hear things that you normally would not hear, and you'd be able to taste things that you would not necessarily have tasted before. So when sometimes people that are on like a yeah, psychedelic trip, they say that they could taste colors or they could like taste music, things like that. It's a similar experience, but it's not drug induced. It's just the third eye showing you that all the senses really are all together. It's the human brain and the human construct that separated all the five senses to where they each are individual, but that's only been done, like I said, through the human brain and through the human construct, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So, is the world ready to go into using the third eye? Mm, not really. Not here in Western civilization, because the third eye does not operate on what we as Westerners would consider the norm. And all those things I just previously talked about, and then also experiencing all ten dimensions of reality when the most we feel just normally is four to five dimensions. So you're tacking on another five dimensions to our reality. You're heightening everything, making everything much more aware and overwhelming people here in the western world are not quite ready for that now those in the eastern world yes they've been doing it for many 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 years so that's why a lot of them they they embrace the the third eye they're not afraid of it because they know what it's capable of and how constructive it is not only for an individual but how it's also brilliant in terms of the collective society as a whole. Now, however great all these things may sound, there are definitely some risks and some dangers with opening up the third eye. Now, some of them are not really all that dangerous, but to the unprepared, they could definitely be overwhelming like like i said having the heightened sense of awareness and heightened sense of sensitivity to everything yeah, you're intuitive some, you're, yeah, yeah you're, you're intuitive and and and, yeah. and you can go deep into your subconscious once you third eye is totally open i'm assuming you can really uh see things that you can't there it did it again yeah, that again. But anyway, what were you saying? No, no, I'm saying your your intuitiveness uh, in terms of what the best psychics and clairvoyance are, but you can also go deep into your subconscious, most likely, when your mm -hmm. third eye is is at at its most um, open uh, and most powerful level. I mean, to an experienced person. Right. So, yeah, it would definitely be overwhelming to someone who is not prepared. Now, the third eye opens up naturally. And like I said, you can't really force it open. It has to just happen, if, it, if that makes any sense. Because if you do forcibly open it, then it has a very adverse side effect. And that becomes to where you are physically and emotionally drained all the time. So by forcing it, that's its way of fighting back and saying, hey, I'm not quite ready to be opened yet. You're not prepared to experience this. So that's what it does to get you to close it to where it can open up on its own terms. You know, now, they say the same thing about crystal gazing and scrying. You cannot 
conjure something to appear in the crystal ball. It has to come to you. It has to be given to you. Mm -hmm. You cannot you cannot force anything, any vision to appear to any anyone, regardless of the of what psychic uh, tool, clairvoyant tool they happen to be using. It has to be the 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 visions have to be given to you. So you have to just calmly, I guess, meditate and wait. And whatever was is meant to be given to you will be given to you. Yes and no. Um, most of it is just getting to that relaxed state. And if your third eye senses that you are in distress or you're not in a calm state, then it will not open. No matter how hard you try, it just it will not open. Interesting. So, so, so it, it opens when your your body is sort of in homeostasis, where everything is flowing in, in, in a in a normal, healthy manner. Your 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 mind, I mean. Right. Your um. Mind. Yeah. When your um, logic is in check, when your emotions are in check, and everything's all in check it will open up on its own. Now, if I could say, for example, you try it and it doesn't open up on the first try, don't be discouraged. Some people it opens up on the first try. Some people it does not. Now, we all have it. It's all a gift. You know, like, anyone can open up the third eye and can use it. Some will be better than others. Like, it's definitely an apt and an aptitude that anyone can definitely learn. But if you're not willing to put forth the effort and try, then you're not going to succeed. It's trial and error and practice that gets it to work. That's why I say I listen to frequencies. And the first time I actually opened it up was just last year. But mine, the first time it opened, yeah, it opened, but it opened maybe 10 to 15%. And when it did open, it was very unclear. And it was almost like there was like a, a blur and a, almost like a film or a haze over it because I had never used it up until just last year. So yeah. don't be surprised if, you know, if it does open and things are not the way you were hoping it for, just, you know, relax. The more you open it, the more it will open itself up more and more and more and it will eventually clean itself out and make it to where it's more clear. Now, <clears throat> another adverse side effect is if you're not prepared and it is forced open and you are physically and emotionally and psychologically drained, it can cause you to literally go insane because of just how overwhelming everything becomes so that's why it's never advised to forcibly open it under any circumstance because, now because when you forcefully open it you get you see so much about your own life and what's around you probably that that is is intimidating to to the average mortal human being if, if it's like totally open and, and, and it's the first time they ever experienced it. And all of a sudden, they're like, they're like seeing everything. Like, like they were like a master computer or something. Like they're, uh, they're, pa they're past, present, present, and, and, and the environment around them. And everything, oh, yeah. everything they know about everybody they ever met in their life. You know, it, that's pretty intimidating. So uh, I can understand why it would be that overwhelming. You know, the sage goddess, it's funny you mentioned the word frequencies. Sage goddess says the clearer the quartz crystal, the higher the frequency. And there's a, quart there's a quartz crystal called water quartz crystal because it is absolutely clear. And generally, they're more rare than the other ones. But she said that it has a very high frequency for people that are meditating or trying to get in touch with the astral world, you know, try, uh, like what, what, like what you're doing with the third eye, um, that 
it, it, it would enhance the, the, uh, the frequencies of, of, of what you're trying to do. Yes, absolutely. Now, there are certain frequencies that do different things. Like, there are specific third eye frequencies, but then yet there's also other frequencies as well, and I posted it to you through a private message, and you posted it on the New Age page. Um, there's a frequency for just about anything. There's a frequency for healing. There's a frequency for repairing DNA. There's a frequency for um, fine-tuning or opening other chakras, uh -huh. et cetera, et cetera. So there's always a frequency for everything. Now, okay. each one is going to operate in a very different way. Now, could you use other frequencies to um, other advantages? Yes, you can. I mean, could you use, like, maybe a healing frequency for the third eye or vice versa? I mean, yeah, you could, but to do it right off the bat, it, you're probably not going to get optimum results. So it's best to do trial and error because whenever you look at these frequencies, yeah, they're going to be on the same frequency level, but the particular sound they're going to produce is going to vary. Like, not all... I've tried various third eye frequencies. Some work well for me. Others do not. <clears throat> yeah, it's. I mean, it, it, that's why the different... In other words, the different um, people that use crystals, the different colors of the, of the various crystals, whether it be amethyst or jasper or whatever, they have, diff they have a unique frequency of their own and the, the colors represent the chakras. Mm -hmm. and, and this is why the, the people that use crystals choose the colors that represent all the chakras. And then you like have a, a black would be like onyx, black onyx, black obsidian would be like a, called a grounding ch chakra. I guess that means a, a base, a foundation. Um, but you know, this, this is what they do. They, they choose different color crystals to, uh, which have different frequencies, which are uh, applicable to different forms of healing and, and you know, trying to solve different pro uh, issues in one's life. But the colors and the frequencies, they're, they're based on the chakras of the body. It's interesting, you know, um, listening to these other people that talk about the, uh, the crystals and how they're used. But um, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the, the average person. It's, it's for somebody... Now to, to to meditate to try to open the third eye and not be under stress, especially now, is it takes a strong person to be able to do that. To be able to block out everything that's happening now during this crisis. So more power to you, man. I mean, if if, if you can open it up and block out all this shit all this uh um um very intimidating uh uh things that are going on today that that says a lot about your ability right well it's not hard once you actually sit down and try it um now everyone has to do it in their own different way but here's how i've been able to do it see you've got to first understand certain problems and that's the point i'm ready to get into is if you don't understand something of course it's going to trigger the fear of the the unknown and the fear of the unknown is really what those in charge are really trying to play on they're really making people so afraid that they want them to cower in fear. They do not want them to be looking at things for what they really are. They don't want them questioning anything. So that's why people are so afraid. Now, once you are able to see that the threat that they're making is superficial and that they're doing this to make other people afraid and you see that and you're able to look at them for who they really are and what they're doing, that goes miles ahead because at least then you have an answer to the problem 
And then from there, you can then form a solution. So what I do is I say the threat is superficial. These people are fear mongers. And if people want to be afraid, fine. But I'm not going to be afraid because I know if I bow down to fear, then they win. It's typical for a sheep to fall to fear and to cower to fear. And it's typical for a shepherd to herd the sheep because of their fear. But if a wolf becomes afraid and they bow down and cower to fear, they truly win. Especially the alpha of the pack. If the alpha, the, the whole pack depends on the alpha wolf. Mm -hmm. You also have an alpha female wolf too. Oh yeah. And you know what's funny about the wolf pack? Not to digress. They, they they let the older wolves stay in the front so they can protect the older, slower wolves. They mm -hmm. they 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 have a certain hierarch hierarchy uh, because they're it's it's a communal type of setup with them. But yeah, they, so they can keep an eye on the older, slower wolves. They they let them be in the front of the pack. It's interesting how I found that out. Oh, yeah. But, um, oh, so where is everybody? <laughs> I have no idea, but, yeah, that's how I've been able to do it, is when you do your research like I do, and you know how to really separate the facts from the shit, then that really goes a long way. Now, that also helps in terms of why the third eye is very powerful and very dangerous and why those of us here in Western civilization and those that are in charge here in Western civilization do not want people to be aware that they have a third eye that could truly unlock their full potential because if they did, their whole system would collapse in on itself completely capitalism would completely fall and those in charge would be completely undermined and everything about them would be completely destroyed because think about it if just five to ten percent of the u.s population that'd be about 33 million people if 33 million people became very consciously aware of who they are and what is going on and take charge of what all is going on th those that are in charge would literally shit their pants because they would be able to not only show that there are those that can take charge and can lead better than the ones that we have now that can really be the alphas to lead to form something new, something that those in charge do not want under any circumstance. They do not want their power or their control that they've got over people undermined for any reason and for any amount. If it's just a smidgen, they do not want that. Because if they see that there's an awakening and that society is becoming not only aware of themselves as individuals, and how powerful they are as individuals, but to how powerful those individuals can be in a collective, then their world is going to collapse, and they're going to be up shit creek without a paddle. And that's what I honestly feel is going on now, is how, however all this fear is being steered, and how they're doing all this manipulation and controlling, Although they think they're steering it in this direction, they're building an illusion for themselves. They think it's going this way. They're steering the ship this way to this direction. But in reality, it's going a completely different direction because now people are starting to wake up and are seeing that reality is not what they say it is and that you know, everything that society has been built on, all of our morals, ethics, beliefs, socially, economically, religiously, they're shit. 
everything about our society is shit. And that, in reality, capitalism never really worked for the 98%. It's only worked for those who are willing to serve the dollar. And if you're not willing to serve the dollar, then it's not going to work for you. And that's what they're afraid of. And that's why they're doing everything in their power to demonize those who are taking charge and not going through with what they're trying to push. And right now, if you look at their faces on the TV, especially the, uh, the Democrat governors in like California, as well as uh, the city of Chicago, the city of L.A., <sighs> you could tell by the way they're talking and the way they're acting, they are afraid. And they're doing everything in their power to quarrel disobedience, to quarrel anything that goes against what they want. Even if it's just to a very minute degree. They have literally gotten drunk and hungry off of their own power. Yeah, well, tell, tell that to uh, Mitch McConnell, too. I, I have no use for the two parties. I think Neither are, do I. They're both on the take. You know, Mitch McConnell can is still giving big bailouts to corporations, and uh, and and the, he's only working for the billionaires, and uh, he he actually doesn't care about all these people that are have been laid off that 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 are worried about you know putting a roof over their heads and 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 and, and, and survive. He can care less, and he. he they they brazenly admit it, arrogant arrogantly admit it now, to, uh, on national TV that they don't care. It's it's like before they used to hide it because they, I guess they were pandering for your vote. But now I guess they don't. They 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 have they feel they have too much power because the oligarch has a a, 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 a tight stronghold. Um. Yeah, you are right about that. But however, yeah, the Democrats are being more authoritarian in this regard, but the Republicans they're trying to be the the order out of chaos. And here's how they're trying to do that. So yeah, the Republicans they are coming from a good stance that yeah, the Democrats are being way too authoritative and they honestly don't give two flying fucks about the 98 percent and they're doing everything in their power to demonize now their demonization is correct in that they really are trampling on the 98 percent constitutionally protected rights but they're steering that ship in a completely another different direction in the way that they're they're trying to get people to go back more right wing because of this left wing idiocracy and craziness and ultimately it'll go to that direction to a certain extent but ultimately I think that's going to backfire because more and more stuff is coming out about the Republicans. Yeah, the Democrats have been doing their shit behind the scenes they've been doing for many, many years but then you have the Republicans as well doing all the insider trading as well as giving the the bailouts to the corporations yeah. while and honestly the lower ninety eight percent needs that particular bailout money. So yeah, and McConnell wa wants to stop it dead, dead in his tracks. Uh, uh, they, they they were saying that uh, that one of the TV doctors, uh, Asian woman, said that oh it's too late to 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 stop the coronavirus. It, it, it's here and it's always going to. I'm afraid it's always going to be here uh, because they didn't do the right things at, uh, at an early enough time. And they said, oh, in the southern states, the numbers are spiking. They're, they're spiking where all the, uh, the, the blue states and the northeast, the curves coming way down day, day, day by day by day. So this is what I heard on the news today. Um, I don't know. I, 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 you know, Trump. I, I mean, forget forget about the CEOs 
worrying about their um, their corporations is one thing, but the people that are on un- are unemployment now and and wait and and their cases are pending, and they're waiting for their for the letter that tells them how much money they're going to get. Those are the ones I feel bad for, not mm-hmm. the ones that Trump feels bad for, the corporations, and the, you know and people that send the lobby lobbyists to Washington and pay people off. So uh, they're both guilty of the same evil of capitalism. And Barack Obama recently said they're not that far apart anymore. The old de- the Democrats of the, of the past, of decades ago, were more to the left. They were more progressive. But now they're so close in similarity. The, Demo- the Democrats and the Republicans, uh, right? That you, it's hard to distinguish them. You know, it's probably like seeing a flock of parrots, and some are red and some are green. You know, I mean, it's the same <laughs> creature. Yeah, I could definitely, I definitely foresee this upcoming twenty twenty election, if there is going to be a twenty twenty election. Honestly, think both behind the scenes are stalling the democratic process for their own selfish and evil greedy agendas but look at say for example to play devil's advocate say there is a 2020 election i honestly foresee that um we're gonna see a huge surge of the republicans and the right wingers getting back into power well now the the little guy's gonna perish well the reason why we're going to see that surge is it really seems like that the Republicans seem to be unified on a front to a certain point, and that is uniting the people against oppressive government tyranny and to try to restore the rights that have been trampled on and outright taken away from by the American people. That's really the big card they're going to play in order for them to win the 2020 election. Well, I, don't, and, I don't want to see people losing their Medicare and, and Social Security and, and see people lose their social services, okay? Uh, but that's what, what, what the right wing will do. They'll take all that away, and they'll, they'll, they'll promote, privatize uh, cor- corporate-owned prisons for, for free slave labor, and, and, and it'll, it'll be fascism. It'll be fascism, you know? Uh, this is why those real progressive are, are, are cowards for not creating a new third party. The real progressives. For no, mm-hmm. but, but then again, there there is sort of a, a, a real left wing party. And they always stay on the back burner. The Green Party. What I don't know what kind of leader they have, but, you know, he has a he or she has a lot of potential with the Green Party because everyone who ever ran for office under the Green Party was a true progressive. Ralph Nader, you got uh, Jill Stein, Dr. Jill Stein, you know. Um, but I don't know why they keep themselves in the dark. Just like the Democratic Socialists of America organization on the back burner. Um, they need, you know, they do a lot of um, aggressive um, fighting and shouting and, and complaining about everything and, and protesting. But maybe the problem is the mainstream media won't give them any face time at all. You're right. They won't. And that was the next point I was getting ready to get to was... Um... Yeah, there is an opportunity for leftists to come out and still have a leftist victory, but their time window is becoming smaller and smaller day by day, moment by moment. So if there is a chance for leftists to win, they are going to have to rebel against what is going on. No ifs, no ands, no buts. That is going to have to happen. So if not, the Republicans will win. They're going to have to basically stand up to their own kind. I know I'm putting the word kind in quotation marks that they're going to have to call out the Democrats for their stupidity 
and their bullshit and saying that, you know, you all should not have done this. You all should not have trampled on constitutional rights. There is a way that you can deal with crises without trampling on people's rights. Yeah. It can be done. I know it's a bizarre concept, but it can be done. Well, it, it, it worked in the Asian countries as far as, uh, you know, getting their numbers way, way down. Singapore, South Korea, mainland China. I mean, uh, the, the social distancing and the, and the masks work there. However, they, they're big on sanitizing everything, including their hands. Yeah, that, that is going to go way more in terms of getting the numbers down and even preventing anything else that's going to happen in the future. Because like here, everyone's been bulking up on their vitamins and their supplements and they have been sanitizing and cleaning the shit out of everything. Like right now, the city streets, the city roads, the countryside, the buildings not only on the outside but the inside, man, they are clean. I will tell you what, that is probably the cleanest, most sanitary places I have been to ever yeah. in my entire life. And, you know, taking, taking those supplements that boost your immune system sky high, they're really not expensive. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C are very inexpensive supplements. Even B complexes. So it, it, it's not, it's not you know, a, a, a burden to eat healthier. You just simply pick and choose uh, certain foods. But the, the, you see, the supplements and the food is one thing. But now this situation has long lines at all markets, at, you know, in stores, at least over here in this part of the country, in, in, in uh, New Jersey. There's long lines everywhere and, uh, and people get pissed. And you know what? There's going to be, uh, don't be surprised if, there, if the protests and the disgruntled uh, American people don't start rioting someday in the near future because that might just happen. Um, hey, I mean, they, they had a video on Facebook of a man from Florida, from Jupiter, Florida, who did not take this pandemic seriously. And they show him in a hospital with the oxygen in his nose. But he, you know, he was talking uh clearly uh and he was saying uh well now i take it seriously because it happened to me so uh and 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 then they come out with with the children Ka kawasaki's disease now do you think there's a possibility that many of these younger children had a pre-existing condition of some sorts be because that other doctor said that the hospitals are getting extra money from the government uh, if they if they claim that all the debts are due to corona. Fire. Well, that's what I was trying to ask you about, about nutrition and preventive measures that individuals can take, you know, on their own initiative to go ahead and protect themselves. Now Say, for example, someone does have a pre-existing condition, and there's tons of pre-existing conditions out there. Oh, right. Now, yeah. they're aware that they have a pre-existing condition. Now, some are very minor, while others are more severe and profound. But if they do acknowledge the fact that they are, you know, not where they need to be, but still yet they take their own precautionary measures, and they bulk up even more on vitamins and supplements to make sure that, you know, their immune system is the best that it can be, that their physical, emotional, and psychological health can be the best that it can be. And children do that very same thing as well. Then why are they trying to make all these connections and why are they trying to claim so much about this virus that, no one's taking a step back and going, you know, that sounds like a crock of shit. But they're not. 
you could tell them that corona leads to people growing bat wings because this virus came from a man eating bat soup or something. People would believe it. So no, I don't really think that this pre-existing condition and this corona have anything connected. All thing what does have a connection is 5G. The 5G is definitely the smoking gun and has the biggest connection here. Because I did ask you in a previous show, and the Divining Rods confirmed it, that hydroxychloroquine and zinc can also be used to treat radiation sickness. Now, here's another thing about radiation sickness I found out about. So now they're saying that it's causing people's lungs to collapse and it's causing clots and causing strokes. Yeah, thrombosis. Guess what else can cause that? Radiation sickness. Uh, yeah, because so, there have been, there had, there, there are elderly people. I mean, I mean, older folks. I don't know how elderly they are that have recovered from corona from the coronavirus, and there are. Uh, people with pre-existing conditions that have recovered from this uh, pandemic. Okay, so it's, uh, you know, they're, they're categorizing people in terms of who's going to survive and who isn't. And then they keep on changing their mind. They keep on saying, well, we really don't know that much about this. Well, if they don't know how much about it, why are they flapping their gums on, on mainstream media telling people different things? Uh, uh, it's interesting that the radiation sick sickness does have the same or similar symptoms. Like mm -hmm. you're saying, like, and what that other doctor said about that, it's like dropping someone on the top of Mount Everest, and they, they're not getting enough oxygen. They're deprived of oxygen. Right. And but but now they're saying, oh, 5G, that's not causing anything. All right. Well, when you actually try to see where all 5G is located, they're not being very straightforward in terms of where 5G is actually being utilized across the United States. But I would assume a lot of the big cities already have the 5G towers. I mean, I've been looking around here in Kingsport to see if there's any 5G towers around here. Thankfully, there's not any. Good. But I guarantee you, if they try to install them here, that that ain't going to fly. You, could, you, could you imagine in a lot of the states like Tennessee, the, the people know, they know all about the 5G conspiracy because they, they're on the internet, you know, and, but they're not going to hear it on, on mainstream media. So the people in, this, in these southern states, they know about 5G. And as soon as they announce that 5G towers are going to be um, put up in their uh, area or region, forget about it. They're going to be up in arms. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I, I found this article very funny. I don't know if it was, uh, I think it was one of the mainstream media outlets, or it might have, might have been RT. I'll have to go back and look. But U.S. intelligence agencies, as well as uh, U.S. law enforcement agencies, are concerned that the 5G infrastructure is going to be attacked and destroyed because of growing 5G conspiracy theories. Well, look at, look at, look at, um, Social media. Social media is taking conspiracy theory videos down left and right. That doctor, he doesn't even want to say the word corona. He just he just said that virus this, or this virus. And he admits it. I don't want Facebook taking my videos down. You know, he was talking about uh, vitamin D in the immune system. He was talking about herd immunity, herd immunity, where once you recover from the affliction, from the, the, the infection, you build anti a certain type of antibodies uh, that recognize anything that looks similar to that virus if it ever gets in their system again. Okay, so these anti antibodies have a great memory. And mm -hmm. uh, 
he was talking about that, uh, trying to explain herd immunity. And once somebody has those antibodies, if the virus enters their body, they won't get, they won't test positive because their immune system would just ravage them. And therefore they cannot infect another person that that went through it that has the same antibodies. So eventually it branches out, you know, like, you know, like multi-level marketing, it branches out. And uh, that's how, that's why um, so many people, they might, you know, they might have chicken pox as a kid, you know, and measles, mumps, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And, and all the other uh, uh, diseases, I'm sure they're still out there. I'm sure they exist, but they have built up this, uh, this certain uh, series of antibodies <clears throat> that have a perfect memory and they recognize it and they go right for it. Mm -hmm. And if, that's the only, this doctor said that that's the only way that uh, we are going to uh, see this pandemic disappear. Is through herd immunity. Now, unfortunately, the people that are most vulnerable, they have to stay on lockdown. They can't be out there partying and socializing at some sports bar if they're if they're a high risk individual. Okay, but they have to. Their family and, and their and their own brain has to realize, you know, if you're high risk. You don't put yourself at risk, but um, yeah. So herd immunity is is kind of like uh, a mother nature's uh, vaccine because with a vaccine, uh, with with the other diseases, they they grew it in an egg. They put a live the live virus in an egg, and then they they kill the virus, and this way your immune system but it has to be perfectly intact. Your immune system recognizes that virus because if, if there's pieces missing, it, it, you don't want, what what might happen is the immune system will start attacking itself or like an autoimmune disease. Yeah, kind of sort of, yeah, I know where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, so but, but your immune system, it would still recognize it as a foreign invader and would still try to fight it to a certain extent. That's what I do like about the immune system is Regardless of how foreign something is to the human body and the immune system, it's going to trigger a response of some sort. Now, whether it triggers a mild, moderate, severe, profound reaction really is yet to be determined. But um, that's why I say, you know, give your immune system practice. And honestly, we do give our immune systems a lot of practice that the more we go outside, and the more we go out in the public and we healthily expose ourselves to all this, but still making sure that, you know, we bulk up on our vitamins and supplements. We wash and sanitize our hands every chance that we get. You know, that's a healthy exposure to give your immune system practice. Well, look, look, look at when we were kids. When we were kids, um, you know, kids touch everything. And what, uh, what else do kids do? Well, they, they get the measles, they get the mumps, they get the chicken pox, they get the German measles, they get this, they get that, you know, and, and be, because kids are out there outside playing, well, I don't know about today's kids, you know, with the internet, but when I was young, we were out there with, with Mother Nature, and of course, kids touch everything, and they get sick, and unfortunately, they bring it home to the parents, but... uh the immune system gets a lot of practice with the way humans used to uh, live before high technology, before they, they became hypnotized by high technology. And a lot of kids are shut-ins and they just, you know, they're online and that, they don't do anything outdoors, anything, you know. Um, I used to see them at the library. They would tell their mothers they're, they're there to do their homework and they, they would be playing games on the computer. 
Oh, yeah. I was one of those. I was guilty. But, uh, I thought it was quite funny. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I herd immunity is has been around for eons. It's just that this is the modern terminology that he was using. Um, mm -hmm. the, only, the only thing I don't like about him is he says, me and my wife were, were trying to find someone who tested positive for Corona. So, so we can, we can participate in the herd immunity. I want to get, I want to get infected so I can, I can give my immune system practice. I thought that was a little crazy for a physician to say that. That's why he, I unfollowed him. Well, as crazy as that might sound, that actually does have some roots based in science. So yeah, it might sound a little radical, a little crazy, a little out there, but sometimes when it comes to finding a solution to a problem, sometimes you have to go a little out there and be a little radical and be a little crazy. So that doesn't sound really, in all honesty, too far out there. I mean, in like all honesty, like the people that are frolicking. Now, in certain states that the media calls the the red states, they, the, the the numbers are spiking because the people are not practicing social distancing at all, and their you know their their droplets are flying all over the place, ricocheting off every wall. So, uh, you know, as far as the the, the numbers go, uh, they're going to be in in deep shit. <laughs> If uh, the numbers keep on going up, they're not. They're they're just saying that because it's been shown and proved multiple times that the more COVID nineteen deaths a hospital or whatever can can rack up, the more money they're going to get. So it's going to be very abundantly clear that you know they're doing this on purpose. Like it could be so abundantly clear as the nose on one's face yeah. that someone died in a car accident and they're going to roll it as COVID-19. Yeah, because like, the hospitals you damn get, fucking idiots. Because the hospitals are getting money from the government. Exactly. By doing this. Oh, by the way, who who is this chick? Click on private chats. I told this person to go on live comments. No bullshit allowed. Go on live comments. Go to It's go it's Mike. I'm going to I'm going to bring him on here before too long. I just want to get through the important to, talking points. But why does he always go to private chat? I told him last week you got to go on live comments, not private chat. Well, I'll or I'll bring I, him on here before too long. Oh, we got the tarot card so. Yeah, like I said, when we get through the important stuff, I'll I'll bring him on, but and now I know right now a lot of Yeah, I don't even see him in the basement. Uh, he's there, he's there, but anyway, um, I have a very radical proposition, and I dare someone to call my bluff on it, and I guarantee you they probably won't. Now, you're going to say this is crazy and out there, but I, we can talk about it all day, but at the end of the day, doing it and seeing the results speak for themselves. Okay. Now, I get this whole entire basis based off of what Sweden did. Okay, so Sweden recognizes healthcare as a universally accepted right for all citizens of its country. Now, they do a lot of preventative measures, and that's also why their healthcare costs are so low. And they also have a not-profit healthcare system. And physically and psychologically, the Swedes are in excellent health. Now, their coronavirus cases are extremely, extremely low, as well as their deaths are extremely, extremely low. So, they're healthy all the way around. So here's my idea to call these people's bluffs. Now, I'd give this idea two weeks beforehand. So there could be some preparation for this idea. So here's what I encourage everyone in America to do. Go out, buy the best multivitamin that you can afford, and bulk up on those vitamins and supplements as well as changing your diet, becoming more physically and psychologically well. And then within those two weeks, I propose a complete reopening and see what happens. I guarantee you we get the same exact result, just like Sweden. But I don't think anyone's going to be brave enough to call my bluff and actually do it. Well, first of all, um, there 
people don't realize, people that watch the news and they, they air, day in and day out, that's why I, I, ch I, I change the channel. 80,000, the death toll is 80,000. Now, if these hospitals are taking everybody that had had poor nutrition their whole life, that's usually how many people get pre-existing conditions. They don't eat properly. They don't take care of themselves. So they, you know, they develop illnesses, whether it be diabetes or whatever. All right. They're... These, these are the ones that are most susceptible to infection. The ones that didn't take care of themselves and ate garbage their whole life and don't take vitamins. Now, what you're saying makes a lot of sense, but the people that are already messed up, it's going to, I'm not saying they can't change and, and build up their immune system and get healthy. Of course, it, but it's going to take time. But, well, you know? that's why I say a two-week preparation. So that way the vitamins and supplements can get into their system. So that way they can start to be physically better and then start doing what they need to do to make themselves psychologically better. That's why I say, you know, have a little preparation beforehand. And then after, you know, a couple of weeks, full reopen just to see what happens. Because, like I said, I get my my idea and my basis on Sweden. They never quarantined. They never locked down. They never social distanced. Their numbers are low. Their deaths are low. The results are speaking for themselves. If it can work there, it can work here. Well, you 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 you're right about the Scandinavian countries because we 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 discussed that on the last show, and you're right about that. They and and there's another thing. They eat a lot of, they eat a lot of fatty fish with lots of vitamin A and D in it. And, and vitamin A and D are, are, are two of the top supplements, I mean, nutrients for the immune system. And, and they're also anti-inflammatory too. And, uh, and, and vitamin D is anti-thrombotic, anti thrombosis, you know, preventing clots. I mean, uh, this is what Scandinavians uh Eat on. This is their diet, and and eat, you've told me about your diet too. That you know that you've changed the foods that you've been eating. You made changes, you know, healthy, healthy changes. You're taking supplements. You know now uh, uh, the best multivitamin I've ever seen. To be honest with you, is Trader Joe's multi for men and women. Uh, it, it it even beats the one I have here. Uh, uh, by uh, nature's way, al alive. Um, oh, uh, Mike Hilton, if you're still there and you are using your iPhone like you said you were going to, make sure your volume is, your microphone volume is cranked up to the max. All right. I just wanted to get that out. Right. Well, the, the last reason as to why I'm proposing that so radical of an idea is. If we prep and we go ahead and we do a complete reopening across the board, everything goes back to normal. That would be an absolute, truly worst case scenario. So that way we can see what the worst of the worst would be. But however, although it might sound like a worst case scenario idea, that could turn out to be a very best of the best idea really ideas until they're actually implemented they're either really good or they're really bad or they're just like a eh, in between and the, another reason why i'm doing it is i'm i'm tired of these fear mongers i'm tired of them making people live in fear well this is the way to shatter this fear and to shatter these illusions that they're trying to hold over people yeah, well, they're saying the, the, the death toll surpassed uh, the rest of the world, the United States uh, death toll. Yeah, I mean, but, but, then they, but then they're saying the Chinese government has been holding back on the truth about the, re the, the real true numbers. Uh, they've been lying. You know, it's possible governments lie, you know, uh, uh, but the thing is, you know, the American diet is, 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 is so far from 
the Scandinavian diet and or or the the European diet. Forget about the the British. They eat crap. But you know, you if you're looking at Europe in general, and you look at the f- type of foods they eat compared to what Americans eat, big difference. Big difference. Well, it is midnight. It is my birthday, Yay. and oh, I think I hear, I think I hear someone coming in to wish yeah. me happy birthday. It is Damien the Wolf Owens' birthday as of right this minute. Yep, I turned the big 26. The big 26. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, and I think they're going to be coming in here with a cake. And I'll be back here in just a moment. So we'll take a brief intermission. Then when we come back, we'll do the tarot card. And then we'll see what else happens. So I'll be back here in a minute. I'll go ahead and bring old Michael Hilton on. Yeah, bring him in and keep me company. All right, I'll be back here in a minute. It's his, it's his birthday as of right now. Holy shit. Yeah. I had no idea. Da- yeah, Damien, Damien's birthday is uh, it's a stroke. Well, now it's 12 o- Now it's 12:01 a.m. Yeah, it's Holy his birthday. Holy shit, man. Hey, hey, if I could say uh, if I could say one second, I'm so sorry about uh holy holy fucking shit. It's uh, it's up to the it's up to the max. Can you hear me now? The iPhone? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I hear, I hear you a little better. Yeah, I, I'm so sorry about that other night, man. Because sometimes I can, I can get the whole, I can get the whole, you know, social contract mixed up in terms of the, in terms of the live stream, man. So I, I'm sorry about that. But uh, any, anyway, uh, oh, I mean, I don't, I don't appreciate people saying something without saying it to my face. You know, everything was going right until you came along. Why do you have to, why, why to those? people whatever why why'd you have to show up try to show up on me like that dog you know just uh just try to have an adult conversation about it not everything has to be a criticism you know uh yeah. I, i'm so i'm i'm so sorry about that though buddy uh, it's all right well you you look you look sober to me uh i'm not i'm not so uh oh, you're I, not a, oh shit i'm having a beer in the background but well uh, one i'm trying yeah. to do the best that i can wait a minute the last time Friday, w- were you using the tablet or the iPhone? I was using the iPhone, buddy. Oh, and 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 the volume is to the max, right? Yeah. Well, what's going on with the volume tonight? I feel like something changed between Friday and tonight. Okay. No. 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 You, you're you're fine now. You're fine now. Um, I feel um, like I agree fine. with Gary about a lot of what Gary's saying on here because we are starting to overshoot the fucking moon. When it comes to the well, reopening, I I don't agree with um with letting people's immune system uh, get used to this virus and just get out there and like like and party like it was 1999. You know, like the, the Prince song. I I think it's going to it's going to be uh, catastrophic. If that's a good word to use for the United States, catastrophic. If the United States, if the United States government does not does not make it mandatory to social distance, um, wear masks when you know when if you happen to if you happen to be. Like if you're if you're over one meter, which is six feet, about if you're six feet, yeah, damn, or, I feel like we're too close, dog. I feel like on this video we're too close, man. What the hell? Yeah, but you're three thousand miles away. So, <laughs> so, oh, by the way, uh, Michael Hilton from San Francisco, California. This is the gentleman you see to your far right. Uh, Thanks, guys. It, if the problem, the, the the need for a mask. Has to do with people that are closer than six feet away from the other person. Now, oh, okay, you all right? People that are closer than six feet from the other individual need the mask. Now, of course, if you're if you're uh, twenty feet away from someone and there's nobody 
on the, to the left of you, to the right of you, and back of you, in front of you, you know, within over over six feet, you're fine. You're fine. But you have to you have to keep you have to be very aware of your environment. Now, as far as people not social distancing and um, and not sanitizing everything. That's like exactly what I was going to say about how are, how are you so how are you so intuitive, dog? Like I feel like you feel I feel like you can you can sense like well you know everything you know I'm about to say. Well, I'm going to tell you a story. My my friend, my my longtime friend uh, uh, Shirley Chen, who uh, lives in the Shanghai China region, she says James. In in China, we in in the Shanghai region and and, uh, and other regions, we just wear masks. I don't see any Chinese people wearing disposable uh, gloves, uh, latex gloves. We we only wear masks. What we do in China is there's there's sanitizer uh, dispensers everywhere, and people carry their own and. And they constantly wash their hands and sanitize their hands uh, because the problem is with the latex gloves, people leave them on too long and they start touching everything, you know, like a, like a little, like a young child, you know, they touch everything, you know, they, they touch That's the thing. They, I Every, thought that if you use a latex glove, that it can withstand any sort of germinology. No, no, it could, but you gotta, yeah, but you have to use them like doctors and, and nurses use them. You have to use them for one purpose, you know, for a certain particular uh, purpose, and then you have to throw them out. You have to take them off properly from the bottom, inside out, boom, inside out, and you have to throw them away. But these people are wearing the latex gloves for hours. You know, they're like, they're, and they're touching everything. And then, and then, of course, you there could be cross contamination if they happen to touch, God forbid, touch their face with the latex glove. Now, now you follow what you follow what I'm saying about why the hand sanitizer. And constantly washing your hands with a bar of soap when you're when when you can, or or just use the sanitizer. Like it's your freaking life. It's it's much bet it's much more effective than uh, the latex gloves. Now, my sister, she has two uh, underlying afflictions. All right, she's she's okay, but you know she's got two aff afflictions. Not, not what afflictions? No, no, they're they're common afflictions. Uh, she's she's asthmatic and she has hypertension. Yeah, because you guys said earlier that it affects people with, you know, certain. Well, they're they're more. I'm not saying nobody recovers that you know has an underlying uh, a pre-existing condition, but they're they're most they're most susceptible. Now, my sister, she she doesn't she she doesn't. Um, What's that popping sound? No idea, man. All right. No idea. I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not doing fucking shit, dude. Maybe, uh, maybe it's the San Francisco thing. <laughs> like right, maybe right. The fucking Santa Ana winds. I, I, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, sorry. I don't, I don't know. It, I don't know. It's like that's the uh, right. It's like rice aroni. It's like rice aroni. So she sprays. She disinfects the. Uh, I'm back. You're back. Birthday boy's back. Yep, and I have returned with cake. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, blue cake. Cool. Like yeah, so what my wife did, she made a vanilla cake with blue icing and she put sprinkles on it. Now, the white icing, she made it in the shape of this Punisher skull here, and she got really, really close, but not exactly. She got really fucking close. You know what? Happy birthday. 26 year, years old. Damien the Wolf owns. Uh, this uh, a young lady here, Ivory Williams, wants to know later on, after your your big uh, Kahuna tarot card reading, if if she can get a, a a reading. Yeah, I replied to her. Yeah, sure, I'll give you a uh, I'll give you a reading. 
just how uh the hell are you 26 years old man i'm 27 years old and you're 26 you're happily married i think you have kids and you're uh you're living the american dreams just man i'm, I'm well, fucking dream. dreaming, oh he's struggling no damien str damien damien is, is not living high on a hog well i mean compared to most americans yeah i'm struggling a little bit but i mean compared to the way most people are not even remotely close and besides the only reason why i'm even at the way the position i'm in was because i got a lucky break yeah because my dad died a couple years ago he left me hundreds of thousands of dollars in insurance life insurance that i could collect on and well, how, how was it? Was that's it the only reason why do was i it aleatory was it conditional life insurance how how was the life insurance well, he had it through work. If I can ask. Oh, hang on. He had it through work. And he had it set up to where where I was his only child. Everything was supposed to go to me. Well, that's how it was supposed to go. But my half-sister tried to claim um, declaration of paternity that my dad supposedly signed this document claiming her as one of his that document turned out to be a forgery and i ended up having to spend fifteen thousand dollars because she got the administrative ship which i thought was pretty dumb considering she got the administrative ship i got all the money so basically it wasn't going to happen unless i gave the okay so the court of the third court of smith county in virginia completely messed that up but i got the administrative ship how was, the, how was it a forgery? Was there some kind of concealment or was there some kind of misrepresentation? What, what happened? With um, the well, it wasn't on the insurance because, well, everything was supposed to come to me. My half-sister absolutely got nothing from the insurance. So the clerk of the third court did it because I said that she's not his child, no matter what evidence is trying to be presented. And he took that as me being uncooperative, so he gave it to her. So what I did was, I basically told him, fuck you, I'm appealing your decision, I'm getting a lawyer. I got a lawyer, and I won. Now, holy shit, man, uh, just, you, you winning this case, and just, you, just I'm, I'm fucking jealous of you, dog. So I won. I got the administrative ship over his estate. The bank would not work with me. So basically, I told the bank to stick it where the sun don't shine. Now, they're trying to hold me and my mother still accountable for the property. And me and my mom have decided we're going to do everything in our power to go after these fuckers criminally and civilly and take them for everything they got. We're, we're going after this bank and taking them for everything they got. Wait, so what was it? Was it a concealment? Was it misrepresentation? What, what happened? It was an outright forged document. Oh, shit. So it was outright fraud. What happened? Uh, an attempted outright fraud. But, but then you rescinded the insurance policy. Well, I kept the insurance money. Because legally, right. that was mine regardless. Right. Everything came to me regardless. But I didn't want to give her a damn cent. I didn't have to. But I didn't want to give anybody a damn cent. I was under no obligation to do so. So did you try but to take control of the policy? or She she tried to see if there was an insurance policy with her name on it. And much to her surprise, there wasn't. Everything was supposed to come to me. So I got all that taken care of. Um, I mean, I bought this house that we live in down here in Tennessee for... Um, seventy nine thousand dollars and it's a four bedroom two full bath um it's a modular home it's not a trailer it's a manufactured home so it looks like a regular home but it's all on one level and it's on a permanent foundation now this house can be moved to a different location if need be but that's why we are that's why it took us fucking forever to get a homeowner's insurance policy because under Tennessee law it clearly defines what's a modular home and what's a mobile home well our state clearly defined this as a modular home 
and is on the same category as a mobile home. Although it could be, but because of the foundation, it's on a permanent fixed foundation as it currently sits. Well, insurance said it's still a mobile home, and basically I told them that you are in violation of Tennessee state law, and if you all do not rescind it, then I'm going to report you all to the Commissioner of Insurance of Tennessee to where you all cannot have insurance here in the state of Tennessee. And they said, our decision stands. I said, all right, fine. But don't come crying to me whenever you all don't have insurance to be able to be sold here in Tennessee anymore. So I called the Commissioner's Office of Tennessee, explaining what was going on. And right now, the insurance company, I'm not going to name names, but right now they're in trouble with the commissioner of Tennessee and they're facing having their ability to sell insurance in the state revoked. Holy shit. So you're, so everything is straightened out now as far as your inheritance goes? Yeah, everything's been straightened out. Um, we were able to look up and get a homeowner's insurance policy for the house. Um, but it took a lot of digging and a lot of research and finally doing some dickling and haggling with some insurance companies, but we finally got it. We got it all figured out. We got it worked out. Yeah. Well, yeah, we were we were talking about Michael and Hilton and myself were talking about how my like when my sister goes shopping, she just she sanitizes everything, the handle of the shopping cart. She, because the problem is Americans are leaving those latex gloves on way too long and they're touching everything. And it's, it's called, well, you know, because of where you work, it's called cross-contamination. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah. it's better to sanitize your, even the, your steering wheel in the car, your hands, the shop, the handle of the shopping cart, whatever. Just keep sanitizing because in China, the people don't walk around with latex gloves on. They they just wear the, uh, a mask, but not latex gloves. So, uh, you know, I New York, like uh, um, areas that have a low population, a lower population, rural areas, semi-rural areas, there's no reason why they cannot reopen the, the, the companies and the businesses. The retail stores, the restaurants, just make sure that people have, are securely apart. You know, but not what they were doing in Wisconsin, where they were all in, in bars, you know, like on top of each other, you know, like, like the old days. <clears throat> uh, let's see what happens. I, I, I don't watch mainstream news anymore. Uh, it, it's too stressful. It, it's uh, they keep changing their information. I know they're lying. Uh, yeah, what is it with all those motherfucking just uh, strong arming ads on the um, on the TV? Oh, having, having about, about forcing uh, forcing vaccines and the chip in people? No, no, no. I'm talking about you know. I have Asperger. I have a little bit of Asperger's, so that's okay. But somebody goes on TV and fucking talks about it for five minutes at a time. And it's just, dude, slow your roll, man. I, I don't need people going on to one of the only things I can do during the day and talking about how I, they're trying to strong arm me into donating to their cause. If I want to do that, I'll let you know. Why are people just hijacking the shit out of this quarantine? Uh, oh, you, you know how many scammers are out there uh, 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 trying trying to make a profit? Uh, well, I don't know if St. Jude's Children's Hospital is a scammer necessarily, but... No, I'm, talking, like no I'm talking about crooks. You know how many scammers are out there exploiting the pandemic? Yeah. My attention. Yeah. 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 yeah All, right. A lot of them. All right, well... Yeah, to give you a, a an example, and then we'll dive into the tarot card reading. So, yeah. this is coming from a future lawyer who's going to be primarily practicing criminal and constitutional law. Okay. Let me give you all a constitutional basis on what it would actually take to make everything that's been going on, all these quarantines, these lockdowns, legal. And I can tell you, it's been done completely wrong. 
And everything they've been doing is not only wrong, it's illegal, it has no constitutional basis and really has no legal authority. So the base on where I'm getting ready to go with is what Wisconsin did. Okay, so what a Wisconsin judge struck down the quarantine and lockdown and stay-at-home orders in the state. Now, here is what the basis for the strike down was. That this was done by an executive order, which is not a law. An executive order basically is just a recommendation or guidelines of what should be done, but in reality it has no real legal basis in any way. So citizens, law enforcement, or military personnel are under zero, I put the use in the word zero, obligation to abide by or enforce it. So what he said was in his ruling that by doing it by executive order, that it completely bypassed the legislative process, and that if they want to reissue a stay-at-home order or to go back to a quarantine and lockdown and shut these businesses down again, it's going to have to be done through the legislative process. And here's what that would entail. Oh, fucking um, shit. Are you serious, man? Well, that's what I'm getting ready to get to, that this would have to be done through the legislative process. To have a quarantine, to have a lockdown, and to shut businesses down legally and constitutionally, how it would have to be done. This would have to be done through the legislative process. Now, here's what it would take. Okay, there would have to be an emergency session called of the House and the Senate, both houses. Everyone has to be present. Okay, so they draft up the proposition either in the House or the Senate. Now, depending upon the vote, it either dies in that particular house or it goes to the other side for a vote. Okay, so both sides vote on it and it goes to the governor's desk. Now, a governor can sign it into law and it does become law or a governor can veto it. Now, if a governor vetoes it and there's not enough to override a veto, it's dead right then and there. Now, say, for example, it passes both houses and the governor signs it into law. All right. So then there has to be specific guidelines in place as to what the quarantine and the lockdown, the stay at home orders actually are. Now, then there have to be punishments for those who violate it. So that would entail law enforcement getting involved, you know, arresting them. But before they do, they have to Mirandize them and figure out exactly what transpired. And then there's a trial. Now, there's where things get interesting. So there has to be a prosecution. And the prosecutor, whether it's, you know, of that particular town, city, county, what have you, representing the state and prosecuting people. Now, the defense, which would be the people that are being prosecuted, have the right to an attorney. All right. So they can go back and forth. Now, they can either take a plea deal, they can be found guilty, or they can be found innocent. Now, since this would be a criminal violation it would require a jury trial. Now, you're depending upon other people to either take the plea deal, to find guilty, or to find innocent. Now, yet, if it actually goes to courts and the courts get bogged down, and the judges and the jurors do not want to convict people for saying that what really they're doing, yet it might be legal, but it's morally and ethically wrong, and it still violates the U.S. Constitution, and they just let everyone go, then what? So that's the conundrum that we're in. But yeah, that's what it would take legally for it to happen. But seeing just how bureaucratic and how much it really would have to take in order to make it legal, still relying on other people to enforce it and make sure it happens, it's not going to happen. That's why they made it executive orders and tried to give governors all these powers so they could bypass all that without no trial, no jury, no due process, all that bullshit. And the liberal media and also the conservative media to a certain extent, it's like, oh my god, this sets a precedent that's so evil and so bad because now they're restoring the Constitution and due process of law. And, and it's like, yeah, yeah. Go home, cry to mama. Go back and crawl on your little hidey hole where you came from and go cry down to a tissue. Here's where I agree with you on that, though, Gary. Is that I said this to James earlier. I feel like a lot of entities and a lot of regimes are way overextending. And you may, you may ding me on this. 
somebody may ding me on this, but I don't care at this point. 60, 64 days in, I don't care at this point. We are way overshooting the fucking moon when it comes to uh, reopening. Now, part of me thinks that how can you have somebody say uh, schools can't reopen, but bars can reopen, gyms can reopen. So schools aren't reopening, but bars and gyms can reopen. Yeah, and what well, about this is totally disor dis fucking organized? Yeah, the barber shops, hair salons, bar barber shops. They, they, Those are the culprit in all this. Those no, are the they're culprit still culprit in all this. Culprit. Okay, I, define I, culprit. I need a haircut. No, no, over here they're closed. They're they're considered non-essential. Well, what they're considered non? Yeah, they're considered non-essential. Non but in California, my state. The whole culprit was basically nail salons. Nail salons were the culprit in my home state. Well, that, that's not essential. Nail salons is not, is not No, essential. not essential anymore, but that's, that's what started it. But, so. but, but places like Supercuts, uh, uh, you know, you, uh, eventually you're, you're going to have like a tumbleweed on top of your head. Eventually a person needs a, a haircut or a trim. Yeah, I mean, that's part of personal hygiene. Personal <laughs> hygiene should be considered essential business. You know how many You know how many people look like the wild man from Borneo walking around? <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, I mean, I, 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 one guy, one old guy looked like Santa Claus. He was, he was heavy, tall, <laughs> and he had this big mop of, of wavy uh, white hair. And I go... I says, where'd he go? I says, oh, wow. uh, you know, uh, I says, sorry, uh, sorry guys, by the way, I, I gotta says, go. Huh? There you go. Next time. Oh, you gotta go? Gotta okay. Go, what are you, Eric uh, Thorn I gotta go have a meeting with my friend. Oh, I gotta go have sake. a meeting with my friend. Oh, because oh, you want, oh, because you want, you want to drink some beers. That's why. <laughs> All right. All yeah, right. but can I just say something about that, though? Just who in their right mind thinks that because they tuned in, they can just direct the whole the whole streamlining of the show? I mean, everything was going hmm? to them. I would say everything was going right until you showed up. But just what gives you what gives you the fucking punity to tell me how I act on a live stream, how I act on a live stream, how I fucking act in person, man? So I'm 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 not trying to overtake anybody else's hosting. I'm not trying to do that because I find that rude and I find it inconsiderate. Uh, but just anybody who feels like they're going to just come in and rationally uh, in, you know, induct this whole rule of law. Well, you're fine. Yeah, but you're, you were fine Friday. Everything was fine Friday. The volume, your, you know, everything. Today, tonight, you're you're fine. Everything's fine. So right. that's it. Le leave it at that. But but yeah, you know, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. The, the first the first time, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I I would have to say, you know, uh, constructively, uh, uh, constructive critiquing. I would have to say there there's some valid points in in the, in the first, but 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 there's some valid points, but still don't don't. Try to you mean don't skirt me, yeah. you know, well, tell me to my face or tell somebody to, to their face. Don't you know be an adult about it. Don't yeah. uh don't try to set people well they uh, said they were gonna they, each other. They you said know, they were gonna show up and right they didn't. They, they said they were gonna show up and watch the show, but I I, I they, they I, apparently they they did not show up. So don't worry about it. <clears throat> And I did, yeah. and I did. I'm here for you guys, but I got to go. But I'm here for you guys. All right, thank and, you. Uh, we'll see you. We'll catch yeah. you later. David, happy fucking birthday, buddy. Thank you. Dave, James, thanks for the invite, dude. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go drink some beer. All hey, right, guys. see you. You know what? This quarantine is getting crazy, so fuck it, man. Yeah. Go out and enjoy life. You too, man. No, I'm trying to. Trying to at this point. See you guys. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he he said that they're overshooting the moon, meaning uh, they're they're not 
using intelligent discretion in, in, in the reopening oh. of certain bars? What do you mean by that? I don't know, but in all honesty, getting back to what I was saying about, um, about you know, I know my idea that I'm proposing sounds very, you know, out there and crazy, but you have to understand, you know, this illusion and this fear that these people in charge have over the population, it's not going to be shattered very easily. It's going to take something really bold and brash to shatter it. To where people wake up and see yeah. it for what it really is. Yeah. Well, if it, if it, well, if, if the numbers um, continue to go in the wrong direction and uh, the death toll is out of control, then all these people are going to say, you know what? We're, 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 we're in a catastrophic situation here in America. I think. I think we better do with that with with them with those Asian countries did, you know. But usually, it's like it's like a drug addict or or an alcoholic. When do they seek help? When they hit rock bottom, then because you can't tell them anything. If you try to do intervention, look, we care about you. We we're worried about you. Oh, you're, you your drinking is out of control. They're not gonna they're not gonna uh, pay attention to you until. The shit hits the fan, and they lost their driver's license, and for a long time, and and their, you know, and their liver, they got sclerosis of the liver or something like that. Then they go to Alcoholics Anonymous, or they they see a shrink or whatever they do. But let, let's just see. I, I'm just sick of the mainstream media trying to fear monger. They mm -hmm. do it day and night. Every day, and that that, and if they're really, if they're really uh, messing with with the numbers and putting out false propaganda like that uh, to support their fear mongering, that's 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 really uh, disgraceful and embarrassing to the whole world. That capitalism, uh, which doesn't shock me is evil and corrupt. They, they just have proved it because of the pandemic. Right. That's why, yeah, I know exactly where you're coming from, but that's ultimately why I've been saying to people, you know what, just forget what other people are doing. I mean, if they're going to be afraid and they're going to be cowering in fear, I mean, there's only a certain point to where you can say, you know what, fuck it. We've tried to show you that your fear is irrational and illogical, but if you want to stay in fear, fine. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Yeah, I just don't watch those programs. Like I, I, CNN, I don't. I haven't put that on in oh my, in in about a month. Right, I don't blame you. But that's also what I was saying at the end of the day. You know, worry about yourself because at the end of the day. You're the one that's in con in control and in charge of your life and your actions. If you don't want to put yourself in a situation that you are afraid of, then don't. It's just really that simple. But just because you're afraid of something does not necessarily mean that other people are going to be afraid of it. So if you want to be afraid of it, fine. But if other people are not afraid of it and don't want to be afraid of it, then they're not going to be, no matter what you put in their way. It's just not going to happen. It's the same with that show, Mountain Men. The guy wants to live off the grid in a cabin where there's grizzly bears running around and mountain lions. And he and he loves his life. He loves it. You know what? If that if you if you if you if that's what a person really wants, and and they're good at su surviving off the grid, and they don't care about the grizzly bears and the mountain lions. You know, it's his it's his choice. Or, or sometimes it's husband and wife that goes to live, to live in the cabin. But so you're, what you're saying is don't infringe on person's const constitutional rights um, and let them make their own choices. Yeah. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, that's kind of what the Constitution is set up to do, whether you like it or not. That's what we got to work with. But the last thing about the Constitution, and we'll dive in here about 
the uh, the tarot card reading is the only way that any government entity on the local, state, or federal level or law enforcement can really restrict your movements is if you have been tried and convicted of crimes and the government and law enforcement has been given the authority to restrict your movement, i.e. something like house arrest. Well, what they're doing is they're bypassing all the legislative process and the due process that it actually takes to make what they're trying to do legal. And they're trying to criminalize citizens for nothing. They're basically criminalizing individuals because they don't want to be dependent upon government. They don't want to have to be shut down and take a welfare check or go on food stamps. You know, they want to take control of their lives and be in control of their lives. So if they want to make money legally, which most people in America do, they're hardworking, honest, means living people. And that's what they want to do. Well, they're trying to make criminals out of people like that, which is not right. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, a lot of these people have businesses that are family owned. That they've been around for many years and, and they're on the verge of losing everything their family built. Literally, and you know, and there these people on the news were, you know, were in tears. You know, the, I, the, I'm losing my, I'm going to lose my business, or or my or my house uh, will get foreclosed, or you know, and these people are in in in, in a dire situation. Right. They're they're in they're desperate. It's 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 a desperation. So I don't see. I saw a retail store that in New York City where the owner said I don't care what the, what the law says I'm opening he was yeah. open and he allowed only so many people in his store and he had sanitizers everywhere and he made sure they had facial coverings and he had customers come in of course the cops eventually hassled them you know, and told them, you better shut down right away. You, you better shut down right away or else. And this man didn't, he didn't care. Uh, I don't know what's going on now, but, you know, he made sure people, customers came in, they looked around, he took care of, he took care of his customers and, and he, they social distance and that's it. And he and he had the the, the hand sanitizing dispensers of uh, sanitizer all over. And and if people now some businesses can't really do that, like a bar, because yeah, how the hell do you how do you how do you do that like in a sports bar or something? You know, like, uh, there's a way you could do it. I mean. <sighs> It might have to be only at a certain amount of people, but then yet there's always going to be a maximum number of people that could be allowed in a particular building or an establishment because, like I said, there is a fire code that's written. So there can't be like 500, 600 people in a building or an establishment that's really set up to only handle 250 people that's set up by a fire code. So, I mean, yeah, even if I could say tomorrow they say, completely reopen we're not going to enforce social distancing you know we're going to allow places to reopen at 100 percent capacity while though that's going to be all fine and dandy but they still have to adhere to the fire code and they'd have to take up with the fire marshal if they're in violation of it and they have too many people in the establishment or in the building so even if they got rid of that tomorrow that's still not going to change yeah, I mean, if you if you're gonna pack your customers in a bar like sardines, that that's in violation of the fire marshal, the fire code. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, and you know what? A lot of bars scoff at the fire marshal code in New Jersey. Well, in in northern New, in northeastern New Jersey, because the people that run it are like, when you talk to them, you can tell they're assholes, and they and they are packing them in. Because and, and charging a lot for for drinks, you know, 
So the greed, the greed of capitalism rears its ugly head uh, in, in this area. The closer you get to New York, the more the more crooks there are. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, the tarot cards out, and we'll dive into the State of the Union. Well, let's see what they have in store for us. And uh, Irie Williams, if you're still on the stream, I will have your tarot card reading for you as well. So if you have a question, go ahead and toss it in the comments. Yeah, yeah. First, first we do this. He, uh, Damien does the State of the uh, Union uh, tarot card reading for the country. And then if there's anyone else, who's that, Sam? Sam Hunt? All right, well, let's see here. It says yay. No, so. Sam, Sam says things like yay. All right, well, if that's you, Sam, that's you, Pleasure Sam. Pleasure tuning in. As of 12 midnight tonight, it's da Damien Owen's birthday. It's his birthday. Yep, I turned the big 2-6. He turned 26. As of 12 midnight. And and he he was uh, eating a, a piece of his birthday cake before. Yeah, and I've got a uh, a beer review that I'm going to do after the show as a nice celebratory drink. It's yeah. going to be see. I had the uh, I had the regular old English. I had two forty twos of that one. Well, this one you don't want to drink two forty twos of it. So I just got a single forty two. I got the old English eight hundred, the high gravity version, the eight percenter. And yep. I haven't had that one in a long, long while, but we'll see how that one turns out. He's talking about malt liquor. Yeah, uh, but I have some craft beer. I have some craft beer in the fridge, and I'm going to do it at a later point. Trust me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sam is not into beer, so. Uh, but you know, is it? Isn't it? Uh, it's interesting. Her timing is perfect. Uh, right before you started shuffling, she she came aboard. It's like she's got that ESP. It's like, ooh, my tarot card senses are tingling. Yeah. Oh no, she, she's, got a, she's got abilities. Uh, she, uh, a, a Reiki master. She's got abilities. All right. Well, Sam, uh, if that's you tuning in, then um, you'll probably want to rewatch the show and watch the first segment where I talk about the third eye and how powerful it really is. But to the unprepared, it's going to be definitely an experience that will be very off-putting to them and also why those in charge here at least in western civilization fear the third eye and want it to be not utilized because if they did their whole entire their whole entire uh, structure would completely collapse in on itself and capitalism as we know it would cease to exist divining rods did Ed, did the famous sleeping prophet the, the famous psychic Edgar Casey, as well as Nikola Tesla, did they were they able to open their third eye and uh, tap into their pineal gland? Yeah. So, uh, aside from all the all the, the fraud, the fraudulent psychic meetings, the ones that are on top, best one. They also have the ability to open their third eye. Yes. All right. Well, but by right. request, I'm going to do the tarot card reading a little bit differently. So, what I've done here is I don't have a table as big to accommodate these cards. So what I had to do is I've moved over here to my bed temporarily. So, I've moved the sheets a particular way. So, at least we can have a little bit of a bigger backdrop so that way all the cards can be seen so i'm going to do the celtic cross reading oh, okay because you need more room for that obviously yeah but i think you're gonna like it it's like a a light green background so let's see here yeah put your, yeah i'm put gonna your, do put yourself on full screen so oh, i will but i'm putting the cards out oh, okay now remember i've not done a celtic cross spread in quite a while so I'll have to go over here and get my book to see exactly what each one's supposed to mean. I remember what the main six cards are supposed to be. It's the four that goes over here that I have to remember what happens. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, there's the main six. 
Now the four that go over here. Uh, divining rods. Did Michael Hilton uh, leave so quickly to join a a beer a beer show because uh, getting getting uh, intoxicated is very important. To Michael Hilton. <laughs> yes. Oh well. Says, oh well. Okay, that's it. Oh well, it is what it is. Well, he's young. He's wow. Well, he's not that young. He's twenty-seven. He looks like he's eighteen, though. But yeah, he's twenty-seven. How about that? Well, I mean, I assume he was probably born in ninety-three. I would assume if he, if ninety-four kids are going to be turning twenty-six this year, then probably those who are born in ninety-three are going to be twenty-seven. Yeah, you know why? You know what surprised me about him leaving? So, so soon. When you mentioned when you mentioned the tarot card readings, he went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." He was doing this. I I thought he was really looking forward to it, but I guess I guess uh, I guess sucking down uh, craft beers is uh, is more exciting. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. I've got the Celtic Cross spread, but like I said, this is going to be on a bit of an interesting backdrop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring myself up to full screen. All right, so here I am, and then I'm going to switch over to the other camera. Just give me one second. Okay, camera. All right, switch to... All right, well, here we go. Let me uh, get a nice close-up here. Now let's see if I can change the resolution a little bit. Looks nice, right. mint, mint green. All right. So, yes, we have the Celtic cross spread here. Now, I have a little bit of a different interpretation as compared to the Celtic cross. I mean, it's a mix of traditional plus my own interpretation. So here we go. All right. So our first card that we have here is the six of cups. So this is what is representing currently right now. Now, this card has been showing up a lot here recently, which is a good indicator that we're going through a lot of emotional generosity in this current period, which is definitely what we need. Now, the reason for this reading is right now we're in a bit of a, an unknown period, so to speak. There's a lot going on, but ultimately the cards will show what's going to happen based on what's currently going on. So it's unknown for right now, but not permanently. All right. So that's how these two cards kind of cross over the situation and the reason for the reading. Now, we have these four cards. So we have the past. We have the future. Now we have the known, and then we have the unknown. So let's go ahead and talk about the past, which is going to be shown right here with the Ten of Swords. Oh, the Ten of Swords has shown up so much here recently in the past little bit. So I think America has just learned to accept what's going on and just whatever happens, happens. They're just they're tired of the bullshit and they just want to just move on from it. So the future, the Wheel of Fortune has shown up before. Here it is again. We have the Wheel of Fortune showing that the future is definitely going to be a lot of unknown, but there's also going to be a lot of chances being taken. For good or for bad, time will tell, but definitely we're in a period of we're just, we're going to do what it takes to get back to as normal as possible, and people taking chances, getting back on their feet. Ultimately, what really needs to be happening right now? Now, the known is right here by the High Priestess. So we're definitely seeing a restoration of like balance and justice and those who really stand on the side of humanity are being shown, and those who are the destroyers are also being exposed. So everything is coming into light, and people are just going to have to learn to face the reality of what's going on. Now, the unknown with the Ace of Cups. So emotionally, there's going to be new emotions. Now, what exactly is this new emotion? I definitely foresee 
uh, an awakening in terms of consciousness, but also being more self-aware as individuals and also taking more responsibility for like oneself, one's actions, not in like a Republican sense, but just realizing that at the end of the day, us as individuals on an individual level, we're the ones who truly have the power. But once we realize our potential as individuals and we give them together as collectives and we put our minds to a goal, that shows the real potential of us. Now, since we've gone through the first six, now we're going to go through the last four. All right. So now we have the, um, the situation from a different perspective. Then we have the house of fears, the most likely outcome, and then the ultimate outcome. So first thing that we have here is strength. So this also comes from the, uh, the chariot. This is card number eight out of the major arcana. So we're definitely seeing people being stronger physically as well as emotionally and psychologically that they're just, they're tired of the fear. They want to just pick up the pieces and just bring all the others that are afraid out of their fear. Now, here's what's interesting. We have the death card. And people are thinking, oh, this means death. No, it does not mean death. This means that the world as we know it is coming to an end. There is going to be a change, but it is going to be a radical change now what exactly this radical change is it's more than likely going to be what i've been previously talking about so we're at least going in the right direction which is good so the most likely outcome we're probably going to see a rise in uh, individuals taking more financial matters in their own hands like becoming more financially independent becoming more financially strong so that way if shit hits the fan in the future they're going to be more prepared so definitely an excellent sign here and ultimately everything's going to resolve itself because look the ten of cups has shown up again these cards that have shown up in these readings tend to show up in some regard or another which is no coincidence but this card here ultimately shows that whatever happens it's always going to be for the greater good. What they're trying to ram down our throats through mainstream media and those in charge, that's not going to be the real change. People getting together, realizing their potential, taking control of their lives, and as a collective taking control of the, their own lives and the lives of our society, our government, et cetera, et cetera, that is what is going to be the new norm. So is that going to be a new revolution? Probably not yet, but definitely a higher consciousness and a higher awakening is what's going on. And it's going to happen, I would probably say, by the end of the year, based on the timing. Because cups usually indicate months when you're looking at a time aspect. So I'd say within 10 months, that would be at the latest next March, so March 2021, everything is going to be back to the new norm. Now, is it going to be 100% the same? No, but will there be a lot of differences? Eh, there will be differences, but for the most part, I'd say life will come back to about 95 to 97% normal. So, it's a tribulation period. I really wouldn't worry too much, but only right now, if you've been Wanting to take control of your life, now is the optimum time to do so. So, yeah, there is my review. I hope you all enjoyed it. And tune in next week because there will be more. Now, uh, are they? Sam said you read the cards clockwise. Are they supposed to be read counter counterclockwise? As long as you read it from the appropriate position, it really doesn't matter. But then yet. Like I don't really do the Celtic cross position all that much. So because I know I know with the Celtic cross, every every position of the card has a represents a different category or a different interpretive uh, part <clears throat> part of the reading. Right. But um 
counterclockwise and yes it does oh well, about what i said well Counter i mean i read it to just wherever to the to the position i mean even if you start off like let's say you know you do the the first two and then you do the past the future and then the known the unknown i mean as long as the conclusion is the same, it really doesn't matter. At least, I mean, that's just been my my uh, my take on it. Is as long as you know how to read the cards and you know the position that they're in and you can interpret it, and the conclusion is the same, it really doesn't matter. At least to me, I really noticed a really insignificant amount of difference. Clock, so you because I, yeah, because I know each one does represent a different aspect of, of life, but if you're reading them, in other words, the, the, the books say to read it, um, counter counterclockwise, or, or does the book say clockwise? Well, you could read one book and it probably would say one thing and then another book would probably say something different. That's why it's good to read the books. Well, I mean, there's not really a 100% right or wrong way. Every reader reads it according to how they, at the end of the day, want to. So... <laughs> Well, it's you, really just a matter of your interpretation skills and realizing the conclusion. So there are ten, there's 10 cards in the Celtic Cross that are laid out, right? Right. 10 cards and the uh, uh, obvious reason for, the, you know, for the, the, the shape of the layout, why they call it that. Um, th that's usually the... Uh, what, what, when you buy any tarot deck, that, that's, that, that comes with the deck. I mean, they, that, that's like a standard. Mm -hmm. you, need, you need room. You know? That's the only thing. It, it requires a, a extra extra space. Right. Cause, I mean, it's 10 cars, but that's why I stick to just the way that I typically read them. I mean, as you saw, it's the same result. I mean, the interpretation and the outcome was ultimately the same, regardless of whether I use my spread or the Celtic cross spread. Yeah, well, if, if, if card one represents one aspect of life, card two, card three, up until uh, the 10th card, if you put, if you put lay the cards out like um, in a vertical line or a horizontal line, and you don't make the cross, right, and you go from the first card, which represents some uh, the the, the uh, individual you're reading, right, and then the second card might represent something uh, your your childhood or distant past, and then of course the tenth card at the end is is the final outcome. I mean, you're still reading the cards in the right sequence, right? Like it doesn't have to necessarily like be a cross. I mean, because it's ten, it's ten cards is ten cards. Right. Present position, immediate influence. Okay. Well, like I said, I mean, I I usually don't do it. That's not really my typical spread that I use. So. That's just the way the books that I've seen have you read it. Card one, that's the first one. Then this card number two is the one that's laid across. Card three is the past. Card four is the future. Card five is the known. Card six is the unknown. Then seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, that's just all the books I've seen shown how to read it. But like I said, everyone does it different. There's not really a right or wrong way to really interpret the cards. Everyone does it according to however they feel comfortable. Because, I mean, as you saw right there, two different readings, same result. Okay. 
Oh. Well, the that uh, she probably left. Who, who wanted uh, Ivory Williams wanted a reading? Is Ivory Williams still around? I guess not. I guess not. All right. I guess she, she wanted a reading like look at his split. And then, oh, well, I mean, no hard feelings. I'm just saying, I mean, I mean, if you want to read it like that, that's fine. That's not really my place to say that you're reading it 100% right or 100% wrong. That's just not what reading tarot cards is about. Yeah, well, of course, there, there are other layouts besides the Celtic cross because it, it, it's in my book. There's, there's, there's the Hungarian method, you know. There's, 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 and there's so many va various decks out there. De you know, I, decks that I've never seen before. And um, mm -hmm. no. but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, I'm always seeing new, new decks and new ways to uh, lay them out, you know. I mean, my mother used to go to so many uh, psychic readers and uh, there was one lady that Cher, the, the celebrity, the singer Cher used to go to called the bread lady. She used to take mm -hmm. bread and throw it in a bowl of water. And yeah, I'm, I'm not joking around. And she was actually very accurate. She Everything she told my cousin, Augustine came true. And, she, and based on how the bread was floating in the water. She did her psychic readings that way. Oh yeah, I've I've heard of that. I mean, there's there's so many ways of divination, uh, methods of divination. Uh, yeah, that one I've never tried. I mean, I had one reading based off of that. I I would assume if it's something you're very aware of and you've had lots of practice. You do very well. Like for me, I'd probably be terrible at it because I don't even know where to begin on it. Because, like I said, I've only had it done to me once, and I know absolutely nothing about it. Well, it's like tea leaves. That throwing the bread in the water is like reading tea leaves. When you know they put the loose tea in a cup, and and the way the tea ends up forming different configurations at the bottom of the cup, they they. When the tea is gone, that's how they do the reading. And um, and we, my mother had another friend that was a tea leaf reader. I, I wonder what makes a person choose a specific method of uh, of uh, clairvoyance. Uh, uh, the tarot usually does it for me because they're probably the easiest to learn how to learn how to to do readings for. I mean, the artwork is definitely definitely something else. Um, I just like to stick to the Rider weight because it's it's universal. It's the one that if someone knows even just a little bit about tarot cards, they they know about it. So and it seems to be the one that is the more universally accepted one. So if you give readings to someone with the Rider weight but they're also readers themselves, they would be able to understand the interpretations of the cards just because it's the universal. Now, other individuals like to use other decks, which that's fine. There yeah, are some really cool decks out there. I like, I like mine, the uh, ancient tarot deck of Marseille, France. Oh, that's, that's a classic. That's it. Now, the Rider weight is the standard, but I, I'm attracted to... The, the vivid colors, like you said, the artwork that makes up the card. I, I think the tarot cards is probably the the, the most loved or the most uh, uh, popular method of uh, divination. Uh, I would say uh, second, but you have to be you have to be gifted is scrying. You know, crystal ball reading or, or staring into a bowl of water. Mm -hmm. scrying, scrying is uh, is well if if you have the ability to do that, 
that's fantastic because you're actually seeing visions. You're seeing images in the ball or, or in the water. Okay, I mean, it, whereas uh, the, the cards take a, a lot of practice and eventually you get to memorize the tarot in, in, as time goes by. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, it just takes time. Yeah, it doesn't take too long. You just got to understand the symbology and the way the card speaks to you. So the Rider Waite is the easiest to learn. Now, when you get into the like the Tarot Marseille deck, which is a classic, but the Tarot Marseille deck, I just, I could never get into it because it's the one that looks like playing cards, just like regular old playing cards that you play like blackjack or poker or something like that with. For me, that deck just did not connect with me for some reason. No, my, my deck doesn't look like playing cards. Well, that's usually what the Marseille deck looks like is that's ultimately what got it started was they look like regular playing cards, but then yet they started to take on a different meaning. That's the reason why the Marseille deck, yeah, it's a classic and you get those who love it and re do really well with it. But then you get people like me who can appreciate it. But I just, that deck for some reason just does not connect with me. The only ones that have ever really connected with me are the Rider Waite. The Gilded deck, which is more of a medieval-themed based oh, tarot not, card deck. That sounds interesting. I like the medieval uh, uh, stuff. Um, oh, Marseille might be Renaissance, period. It is. Um, I want to say... Uh, uh, I know it's not super, super old, but... It's one of the tried and trues that's been around for, I know it's at least 200 years old. I want to say they're about. Then, um, then I have my Mystic deck. I don't know where that one is. I'll have to find it. Then I've got my Necronomicon deck, which is a one that's uh, based off the Necronomicon. Then I have remember a... The, remember the Gypsy Witch deck that had that had the... For the, you know, for the average person that had the interpretation written right on it? Yeah, I've had that one. I, I think I had that one at one point, but I don't know what happened to it. Then I have my Mayan 2012 Apocalyptic deck. That one is a collectible. That one is no longer made. Um, the artwork on it is definitely Mayan-themed, and it's more apocalyptic theme but i mostly just got it because the artwork was cool and yeah i tried to use it but overall i i could not connect to it at all so i don't know you know why i only connect with a certain amount of decks while others you know i do very well but that's just a me thing like someone could probably have no connection to the right or weight deck and do terrible with it they would do well, with like the, uh, the Aleister Crowley deck, the Thoth deck, which I have one of those as well. That's probably the hardest one to interpret because the symbology that's in those particular cards, it's very hard to understand because he presents it from a whole entire different perspective. So if you can read the, the Thoth deck pretty well, then you're a tarot master, basically. Yeah, it, it you know the the and and it, the list goes on and on like like uh, on that the group on Facebook they had um, the fairy the fairy deck uh, based on you know the unseen world of fairies and the, and their connection with with trees with the forest um, and um, actually Wicca, Wicca uh, they don't they don't have a temple or a church they 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 prefer to be amongst nature to when they gather um but they're really it really is endless i saw i actually saw like a multicultural type of deck where you have some cards were egyptian themed and some were totally different from a different part of ancient ancient civilization a different part oh, yeah. of yeah I've seen a person read with them. I it, it's preference. It's like you know, why does one person 
just read tea leaves and this person has a crystal ball and this person has likes tarot it's it's uh, i i don't know what what drives a person to use a, a certain psychic tool uh, uh i know that if 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 it if it um enhances their abilities can you can't argue with success you know yeah you can't but i mean what got me started in terror was when i had my first reading when i was 16 down in myrtle beach south carolina yeah that was pretty fun to be honest oh looks like we got someone else so let's see here uh alicia flamini i'll be free from the problem ruining my chances for happiness. Okay. Well, I be free. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's see here. I can bust them back out again. So let's see here. Um. So Alicia, this will probably be more of like a yes or no question. So let's see here. Um. Alicia, I usually don't. Yeah, I usually don't do a yes no question. So. Let's see what we got. Um, well, remember, remember the reading you did for that other woman a long time ago, and and you laid out like uh, several cards. I think it was. Yeah, I mean, I can use that one, but let's see here. Well, um, maybe Alicia can be a, a, a tad bit more specific. Uh, is, there, is there anything specific? Being that. You know, we, he's going to lay out several cards. Is there a specific issue that you're thinking about right now based on your post? Oh, we have we have a Jesse Hernandez. How accurate are you on your tarot reading? Well, uh, I mean. <laughs> Well, accuracy when it comes to tarot card readings is a bit of a complex issue because, yeah, the reading could be right for right now, but then yet there could be other external factors that change everything to where, you know, the, there has to be a whole entire new reading about what's going on, uh, things like that. So let's see here. All right. So she says... Um, I'm not sure what the problem could be. All right. Well, let's see here. Well, well, I, well my answer to Jesse Hernandez is that if a psychic, whether it, whether it be tarot cards, crystal ball, or or tea leaf, or whatever, if they were that accurate, they would be picking the mega million lottery winning numbers like all the time for themselves. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. They wouldn't need to to give psychic readings for others if they were if they were truly that accurate. I mean, um, now her reaches. I mean, if I was that psychic, I would be picking Powerball and the Mega Millions numbers. That would go like this to uh, 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 advertising as as a. Uh, a woo -woo 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 advertising my skills as a psychic actually that's what or or the racing horn. pick the horses see who's racing at a certain night i knew a guy they used to gamble on race horses uh on on his uh smartphone from all over the world he would bring up all the races even in australia and, and they and they they ran, um, they ran clockwise instead, right. of, instead of counterclockwise in, in some countries. Right. Well, let's see here. A person's fortune being told play a major uh, role effect while their readings is being to told. Um, not necessarily while it's being told, but usually that's more of an after effect. Okay. So, like, if you like what the cards see, and it shows you how something can be achieved, then do what it recommend or what it's showing you, and then that would be the most likely outcome. But then yet, 
there could be a reading to where you know you do everything correctly, but there's other external factors. There's always going to be a unknown unknown. So really, you're taking a gamble and really taking a chance because, like I said, these just show things as they are right now, and they can change like that. But anyway, so let's let's see what we got here. So I'll go ahead and start with Alicia's reading. So, huh. yeah, so I'm going to do original. I'm going to do the reading a little differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick cards from the deck and just pick whichever one comes out to me and see what the results are. Um, I might as well bring up her original question. All right. So her original question is. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and spread out the cards. And then I'm just going to draw from this pile here, just picking whichever one calls to me. So let's see here. Okay. All right. So card number one will be what represents her. All right. And then I think for this one, I'm going to do a... My, I'm gonna do my regular spread, the seven card spread. So let's see here. Okay, so we got that one. This one. Okay. This one. Yeah, you'll be able to see the cards once he lays them out. Yeah, all right. So now I've got the four. So now let's see about the, the connection cards. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah, this one. And one more. Okay. So now I decided to do it a little differently. I decided to pull from the deck and see which cards called me as compared to what's on top. So let's see what we got to work with. All right, let me just pull up my settings. And then do the front face. All right, there we go. Now I'm just making me front and full screen. Okay, so... This is my typical seven card spread that I do, but this time I've decided to do eight. So this is a typical four card spread of past, present, future, outcome. And then we have three connection cards here. And then up here is going to be a representation card for you. All right. So based on what you told me, the moon card is a very fitting card. So this is card number 18 out of 21. Or 22 cards, sorry. Yeah, 22 cards out of the Major Arcana. So the moon symbolizes a lot of the unknown when it comes to figuring out certain aspects. Although it's unclear only for the moment. Now, it could be unclear for a variety of different reasons. It could be like um, the situation itself is not really clear as in like there's just so much up in the air or there's a external factor like there could be some trickery, there could be some deception going on, but in due time, everything will become clear. All right, so now we have the sun, which is actually the following card to the moon, but it's in the past position. So I assume things have been very clear in the past, but as symbolized by the moon card, their time of things not being so clear, but what's led up to this is what is being shown by the present card, the Nine of Swords. All right. So the Nine of Swords is in 
the sword suit and it represents air but if you notice here a lot of this is just the fear of the unknown and it causing a lot of angst and anxiety what have you so most of what's going on is more or less what's going on in your mind just being so afraid of the unknown and it's okay to be afraid of the unknown to a point but you can't let it completely consume you and revolve around anything and everything you say and do 24 7 in your life about everything if that makes sense so the future um whatever it is that's going on the answers will come to you in due time and it shows right here with the Ten of Wands that you're going to gather your thoughts, you're going to think things through, and the solution is just going to come to you by figuring out exactly what's going on in your particular situation. And I would say for a time, if we're going to looking at like a time window, I would say within about the next, oh, 10 weeks or so, which will be here in the next three months. Now, the outcome here is with the Six of Cups, which we're going to definitely see some emotional generosity, as in there's going to be those along the way help you figure out what it is that needs to be figured out. So I wouldn't sweat too much. You're just Right now, you're going to have to just hang loose and just go with the flow, see what happens. Now, Let's look at our connection cards to see if there's anything here that is an indicator of what could potentially be the problem. Okay. So the past here is being represented by the King of Pentacles. So I would assume that somewhere along the lines, these problems have stemmed from something financial. That at one point there was financial security, but now there's not financial security, which you're not alone. There's millions of Americans and not billions of people around the world who are in the same boat as you and not being financially stable. So don't worry, you're not alone, but that's definitely what I'm picking up here with this card. Could I be wrong? Yes, but typically if it's something with finances, it comes up here in pentacles. So right here, the connection between the present and the future. When the hangman shows up, he's card number 11 in the major arcana. He follows the wheel of fortune. So when the hangman shows up, it's time to just, like I said, go with the flow, see what happens. And a new perspective will come your way. It will be like a, a light bulb moment, like an aha moment in terms of what it is that you're looking for. So I would assume probably something with finances still. Now, the outcome here between the future and the outcome. Whatever it is that your problem is that you're facing, it's definitely in the emotional department. So it could be mixed feelings about your finances or it could be mixed feelings about other things that are currently going on in your life. But like I said, there's a lot of uncertainty going on right now and a lot of people are afraid and people are being resilient at the same time. And it's just going to take a while to see where things go. But ultimately it's going to go the way that you want. It may not be ideal, may not be hundred percent the way that you want it to go, but ultimately everything's going to work itself out. And again, like I said, I would say 10 months or no, not 10 months, 10 weeks thereabout. That's when everything will come. So ultimately look for signs and listen to your intuition and listen to your gut instinct because they will do you so much greater good because that would be more for your act and your aptitude in terms of dealing with the problem. I mean, I hope this helped, but since you didn't know exactly what the problem was, 
and you weren't specific in your question, I just went off of just what the cards show and what they usually indicate when it comes to things like this. So hope that helped. All right. Well, that wraps up the reading for that one. Well, let me, uh, will Alicia Flamini, Divining Rods, will Alicia Flamini be free from the problem ruining her chances for happiness? No. Hmm? The Divining Rods said no. Uh, well, does Alicia Flamini have control and make a, a, a decision to end <clears throat> this so-called problem? Yes. So, so Alicia Flamini has the ability to end this problem, this, this barrier that's standing in her way to achieve happiness. Yes. So, um, can she make this decision at any time that will solve this problem? Yes, she can. Okay, well, that's what the divining rods are saying. Now, you got tarot, you got divining rods. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you got to crack a few eggs to make an omelet in life. And mm -hmm. you can worry about displeasing other people and worry, wor or worry about what they think about your behavior or, or, or what decisions you make in your life or how, what kind of person you are. You can't worry about anybody because... They don't create your happiness. Your happiness has to come from within, not external sources. So you have to create your own happiness based on your decisions. Is, um, is this problem concerning a very unreasonable and difficult person in Alicia Flamini's life? Yes. Um, is this person a close relative of Alicia Flamini? Yes. Oh, so this All person right. is not a a an associate, a, a a friend. Is this person a friend? No. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, I, I got one more question to see how accurate my my reading was. Okay. All right. So, copper divining rods. Was I correct in saying that it's definitely something financial related? Okay. The pentacles. Right with the king of pentacles. Yeah, that's a, that's a high ranking card. Um. Now, is it is it a mystery that that determines what a psych what tool a psychic decides to use in their divination so so it's uh, it's oh it's based on total uh chance like rolling the dice what what tool they're going they're going to choose then so whatever works for them you can't argue with success all right all right, thank you. All right, is, is anyone else out there in cyberspace that's watching this show that has a question? Well, I mean, if not, I guess this would be a prime place to wrap it up. Yeah, a anyone going, 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 it's gone, it's, no one else, okay. Um, unless they're typing now. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And don't forget to uh, to click like to the Facebook group, New Age Mysticism and Healing. 
Uh, the beginning of the show was about The Third Eye by Damien Owens. And, and it, it happens to be his birthday as of midnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, he did an outstanding lecture on The Third Eye, how to open it up, how to stimulate it, how to utilize it. And uh, New Age Mysticism and Healing. And we also have Progressive Discussions Facebook page, as well as Progressive Discussions YouTube channel and Tumblr. And we we deal with politics, uh, political issues. Um, I'm a um, a burn. Well, I can't. Well, if, if he's still if he's still on the ballot in in in, in November, I'm a Bernie bro. I'm a left winger. Uh, that's me. That's why I, I, I have this red beret on. Um, and that's that's about it, really. Um, so click like. Um, and uh, I, 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 I have been doing talk show, uh, well, internet talk shows since 1995. Um, Damien Owens. Oh, really? Oh, I'm, I'm happy that you were pleased about the reading. Um, over, you know, overall, whatever, whatever we can do to be helpful for anyone who uh, enjoys our shows and, and, and is uh, viewing. Uh, the, the, other, the other lady wanted a reading immediately, but we, we didn't even... Damien didn't even do the tarot card reading for the United States yet. And he, you know, he told her, or I told her it would be after he does that reading. But uh, anyway, the show is recorded. And um, yep. and now I'm going to do a beer review. I'm going to stream it directly to my uh, Damien's Reviews YouTube channel. And let's see how it goes. All right. Well, glad to have you. Uh, okay, so you you are so we're gonna end it, and then you're gonna yep. and you're gonna sh you're gonna stream it to uh, your beer re Damien's Damien's reviews YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, all right. Very well. All right. Well, it was a blockbuster show. I hope to see everyone next Sunday at ten thirty. Yeah, and, and I mean I, I'm going to be doing the show, so. Uh, you know what? There's so, there's something there's something uh, uh, there's something good about. You know, I haven't made up my mind what, what's a better stream to go to the YouTube channel or to the Facebook page. For for this, the New Age Mysticism page. For for mm -hmm. this topic. For for, for this. Um, you know that all depends if. If these shows are downloadable, I know if you go live on Facebook, they give you the option. There's a button where you can download it and then on YouTube. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna check and see if I download the show and put it on YouTube. So because that that then it wouldn't matter where you stream it to. But anyway, good night everybody. All right, night night everyone. See y'all next Sunday. Bye-bye.